Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show, Ramadan A Date with Dr. Zaki. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers. And today we have a special episode addressing your questions on the topic acts recommended and discouraged whilst fasting. Dr. Zakia, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In our last show regarding this topic, we utilized every second of the time. There were so many questions and so many issues that we had to bring out. Um, so what we did was we set up this special show addressing only questions from our audience, alhamdulillah. So regarding that, let's start off with the first question. How can a person seek knowledge during the blessed month of Ramadan? Seeking knowledge is a very good act, especially in the month of Ramadan. There are various ways a person can seek knowledge, besides reciting the Quran, which is a recommended thing during Ramadan. A person should even read the translation of the Quran. He should read the book of Hadith. And as far as possible, he should read the books which are Sahih, the books of authentic Hadith. The best is the Qutb al-Sitta. If you can read that, there's nothing like it. That is Bukhari, Muslim, Sunan Tirmidhi, Sunan Abu Dawood, Sunan Nisai, Ibn Majah. These Qutb al-Sitta are the best. If time doesn't permit, at least we should read the Sahih books of Hadith. That is the Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. If time doesn't permit, at least we should read the summarized version of Sahih Muslim or the summarized version of Sahih Bukhari or at least read the Muttafiq alike, the Hadith which are common between Bukhari and Muslim. He can read the book of the Seerah of the Prophet. And the best book on the Seerah of the Prophet in English language is Raik al-Maktoum, the seal nectar, which speaks about the biography of the Prophet. The other book on the Seerah of the Prophet is the book of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Taya al-Ismail. Even that's a good book. A person can acquire knowledge by attending programs. He can go to any Islamic organization, attend lectures, attend seminars. This will increase his knowledge. He can watch video cassettes of Islamic lectures, of Islamic programs. He can hear audio cassettes. He can go on the internet, go to authentic Islamic websites. So these are ways in which a person can acquire knowledge. And this is a good way of spending your time during the month of Ramadan, acquiring knowledge. And surely you will be benefited and you'll get a great deal of reward. Why is it encouraged to acquire religious knowledge during the blessed month of Ramadan? As far as the Quran knowledge is concerned, the first guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran, it was not to offer salah, it was not to fast, it was not to perform hajj, but it was ikra. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ikra, or Surah Alaq, chapter number 96, verse number 1 and 2, Ikra bismi rabbikal lazi khalaq, khalakal insana min alaq, verse number 1 and 2, which means read, recite in the name of the Lord who has created who has created the human being from something which clings a leech-like substance. So the first guidance given to the humankind in the glorious Quran was to read. It doesn't only say read, it says read in the name of thy Lord. That means reading is important, acquiring knowledge is important, but acquiring knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of our deen, is the utmost important. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mujadila, chapter number 58, verse number 11, He says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised the rank of those people who believe and those who have been granted knowledge. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 269, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants wisdom to whom He pleases. And to whoever He grants wisdom, He raises them in rank. And it is for those people who understand. And the beloved Prophet, Muhammad he also said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, one number one, hadith number 71, that the beloved prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to whoever he wants to do good, he makes them advanced in the religious knowledge. That means he gives them religious knowledge. So whoever Allah wants to do a favor on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him knowledge of the deen. A beloved prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, one number three, hadith number 4005, our beloved prophet said that the moment a person dies, after he dies, all his activities cease, except for three. Whatever good deeds he gets, he ceases after the person dies, except for three. A person who has done recurring charity, 
a person who has given knowledge to other people and the person whose pious children pray for the parents after they're dead. That means after a person dies, all the good deeds cease except for three. If a person has done some recurring charity, that Satkai Jariya, has done some charity from Vox which is keep on regularly rotating and helping people. So that's from Satkai Jariya. The other is the knowledge that a person gives. And after he gives the knowledge, he imparts the knowledge to somebody else and he keeps on utilizing the knowledge of Deen in helping humanity. That's Satkai Jariya. And the last is the pious children who pray for the deceased parents. Therefore, knowledge is very important. And Allah also says in the Quran, in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 43, and Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, First, Allu ahal zikri in kuntum la talamun. That if you do not know, ask the person who possesses the knowledge. Allah says, ask the knowledge of people. So therefore, a person who has knowledge has got a high degree and has chances to pass in the examination more and he'll have a greater degree in the Akhara. So that is the reason acquiring knowledge is what most important is, and especially in this month of Ramadan. If a person acquires knowledge, the chances that he acquires the knowledge is higher and he can spread it to the others. Zakhlaq Hef, the answer. Backbiting, of course, is prohibited, irrespective whether in Ramadan or outside Ramadan. However, would a woman who complains to her husband about her mother-in-law, will she be considered as a person who has backbited? Regarding backbiting being haram and the major sin we discussed in the last episode, and there are various hadith and Quranic verses, it's one of the major sins. But as far as a wife complaining to the husband regarding the mother-in-law, but naturally she is speaking something about the mother-in-law, where the mother-in-law would not like anyone speaking about. So it does come in the category of backbiting. Is it a sin? Is a question. Such incidences where a person complains to someone and thinks and feels that once the complaint is given to the person, maybe there is a correction in action, like a wife complaining to the husband about the mother-in-law or the wife complaining to the husband about a son that he is doing so and so things which are wrong. So the husband will correct being a father of the child. Or maybe one of the two brothers is going and complaining to the father that my brother did so and so thing which is wrong. It's speaking ill about him behind. But that is so that the father can correct the brother. So these things have been permitted. Because the main reason while doing this thing should not be to mock at someone or should not be to belittle anyone. But the main purpose should be that the person who the person is complaining about, there should be correction in act. And if you read the commentary of Imam al nawwi as far as the hadith of uh, Sahih Muslim, which we discussed in the last episode, hadith number 6265, in which the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that, do you know what is backbiting? And the Sahaba said that the messenger knows the best. So the Prophet said that if someone speaks about another person behind the back which he would not like, that's called as backbiting. And the Sahaba asked, what if I'm speaking about the person is true? The Prophet said, then it will be called as backbiting. If it's false, it will be called as slandering. So based on this, the commentary of this hadith according to Imam Nawbi, he said that backbiting, gibat, in six conditions it's permitted. Number one, he says that if something is told to a ruler of the land, or to a judge, complaining against the act of another human being who has done wrong to the person. Maybe he is stolen some wealth from you, taken your property away, or has done injustice to you. So if you go and complain to a ruler or to a judge against another human being, another Muslim, this is permitted because you want the wrong to be undone. So in such cases, Gibbat is permitted. Category number two, that if you complain to someone who you feel that person has an influence on the person who has done an evil act or a sin and you feel that he will stop doing that evil act, you're permitted. For example, if you know of a friend who is very close to the person who has done an evil act or done a sin and if you tell him that your friend has done so and so, so and so thing or is drinking alcohol and you feel that he has an influence on the other person and he can prevent him from doing the sin, 
it's permitted to keep her. So the question regarding the wife complaint to the husband either comes in the first category or the second category, either it's an injustice done to the wife or maybe the wife wants to tell the husband that you correct the mother-in-law, it may come in first two categories. The remaining four categories which Imam an Nawi said Gibat can be done, the third is that if you are approaching a mufti or a religious person for some religious advice, so you may say that my father has done so and so act or my wife has done so and so act and describe the act and ask me what should I do. Even in this case if you avoid naming the father or the mother or say in the third person that my friend's father is doing so and so, it is preferable. But in such cases, while taking religious advice or a fatwa for a particular act, it's permissible. The fourth category, which Imam an Nawi says that Gibad is permitted, is that when you know of a narrator who is a liar, and if he narrates any hadith, so it becomes incumbent on you to tell the people that he's a liar, or his memory is weak because to protect the sharia. Or, for example, if someone is selling a slave, and if he knows that there are some bad habits in the slave, or maybe he does adultery, so it's compulsory that the person who's selling it should tell to the buyer that the slave has so and so false. Or, if a person asks you that he wants to marry another person, and asks you how is the person, so that becomes obligatory on you to tell the wrong points, or the points which are not correct in that human being. Your intention here is not to belittle that human being. Your intention here is not to degrade the person, but intention is to give the right information, whether for marriage or for business. So in these cases, this is the fourth category where Imam an Nawi says that is permitted. As far as the fifth category is concerned, that if you know a person is doing a major sin openly, like he's drinking openly, or if he's cheating openly, or if he's robbing openly, so then you can tell the public at large that this person is a person who cheats or a person who robs or a person who discontinuously bidah or there is a religious person who you know who is doing fatwa and you know that he is not a person who is truthful so here it is permitted that you can speak against the person and the sixth category is that while identifying a person if someone asks you for identification at that time to identify the person you may have to use his nickname which the person may not like like you may have to tell that the person who's short, person who's tall. So here you're using these nicknames to identify the person which the person may not like. Mainly for identification. Here also if you can avoid this nickname for identification is the best. But if you can't avoid, you can do. Imam an has mentioned six categories in which gibbat is permitted. Thank you, Dr. Zakir. Inshallah, we'll see you soon after the short break. It is...